Um, I don't know how much you know about our electronic flight bag, but it's a unique open platform solution. It's a certified retrofit class 3 EFB. And it's a real-time application through the Iridium link, is that exactly. right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I can see you know a lot about it already. <laughs> what we're doing here in partnership with a company that we're going to announce very soon, uh, we will set up a, um, an, a low-cost in-flight entertainment solution that is actually connected through the through the EFB and comes as a certified solution on board. So what the passengers will be able to do is they will be able to open up their laptop, open up their Blackberry or their iPad or any kind of solution that they actually carry with them and access the system on board and be able to download and view live movies, live TV and um, uh, audio as well. So so the passenger will have their own their own iPad. They will it's have their, their own, own devices. They won't be distributed in flight by the airline. The airline can do that. They can yeah. opt to choose that. They can they can they can rent them. They can sell them on board if they would want to. But for an airline not choosing that option, every passenger can use his own piece of hardware and actually access the onboard server and watch live streaming movies and TV and audio. What you're doing is launching a wireless IFE system. Exactly. Okay. So you're a, you're an EFB specialist launching a wireless IFE system, Absolutely. and that's the announcement today. That's the announcement. That's interesting. And to ma making the leap into IFE, I know the market is very, very hot right now. Why, right. why the decision? It's getting a little bit crowded out there. Well, I think it's the very first time that we actually open it up through an EFB solution. So passengers could actually pay for the solution on board using their credit card. It's also the first time that we actually use an EFB for functionalities beyond the cockpit, actually extending it to the cabin and um, creating a new level of passenger comfort through this solution. Right. It's very low cost, that means an airline doesn't have to go through a very large upfront investment to install this. Basically, it's an off-the-shelf solution that can be implemented in any aircraft or any, any type of fleet. So it's specifically very good for those airlines that already have an in-flight entertainment system for their long-haul uh, fleet, for instance, or for their wide-body aircraft. It would augment the embedded systems that are already in there, so right. the passengers could have a choice. But also, it would work very well for those airlines that don't have that solution on their domestic 7-3 fleet, for instance, right. or their short-haul fleet, because this is something that would work even on shorter flights. I mean, you can just pop it open, access the system, and watch a movie or a TV show for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, two hours, nine hours, whatever you want. What, what kit is Flight Focus providing? The access points, the, okay, we the server? Anything the... that goes on the airplane. So yeah. we provide, first of all, the streaming server. Yeah. We provide the connectivity. So basically, it's all the hardware. Yeah, all the so hardware. So how, um, your, your tests, uh, have, uh, I imagine you've tried this out on yes. the equivalent of Air Asia's long haul aircraft fleet. Yes. So how many, what, 200 running it? Uh, well, you, there's a seat capacity of 370 yeah. of uh, thereabouts on a 330. We have done the system design such that we could have a take up rate of 100% that you'll never get. So yeah. there is spare sure, capacity sure. in the system. Now, what the actual take-up rates will be, we don't know. Yeah. That's a bit a matter of the price point and how they do it. But yeah. again, we are not selling the system. We are the enabler. Yeah, very important. Right. Uh, Sami will come here. He's the man because the idea is that this concept we launch on Asia, but we, they will, will also jointly offer to other airlines. Okay. So oh. we will white label it, and then everything, including content, everything, we are going to push out to the market. And you'll spearhead it. No, actually, it will be tune box. Uh, it will be tune box with us, so we probably do the sales. So it's a, it's Steph a, and his team will push it. It's, it's a, a joint undertaking, undertaking where undertaking. we will both will we be both offering each other services. Yeah. So, so you're, you're providing, yes. Yeah, so you're really you're providing the hardware. So when these airlines. Ha enter discussions for this solution, they're entering it with Toonbox, and then you're the provider of the hardware. The contract, they, they, they could be entering yeah. it through us. That's, that's they could be, but could kind be of when it comes down to brass tacks, they'll be out there talking to the airlines the, the and then here, calling you and saying, we need more of your equipment. Well, actually, it will only run on our equipment. It's yeah. unique to the Flight Focus electronic flight bag solution. So any airline opting for the Toonbox in-flight entertainment solution will eventually have to deal with Flight Focus for the hardware. And but you can be an airline without uh, 
They don't have to be a customer of your electronic flight bag to do this, do they? They will have to, they have to purchase the electronic flight bag to run this solution. Why? Because the way we've done it, we, as you know, we have a very powerful server. In that server, there's five processing nodes. I'm keeping nodes. that in, by the yeah. way. And uh, within those processing nodes, we reuse capacity. So this means that to keep cost low, to keep weight low, we're basically adding add-on modules that can then deliver, in, deliver enough streaming power to the cabin. Ah, your electronic flight bag then is acting as the base it's architecture the base. and you're adding this on. It's acting as the base, it's acting as configuration control for your content loading, offloading, wow. it does the encryption, it does the watermarking of your content, so it does all these things that take lots of computing power. We're just reusing the, uh, the, the computing power because our server has five dual core processes inside. That's just far too much for an EFB, even for real-time EFB. Wow. So we have spares, and these spares, and that's another important point, we are using a, a hardware segregation method, so it's not an all-in-one box, which means the IFB portion is completely separated and decoupled from the cockpit That's one. pretty so important. You don't, so you don't have any cross You might want to underscore that one in this <laughs> announcement. <laughs> yeah. um, how much additional kit then is required then to bring this on? If you're Air Asia X, you've got the electronic flight bag system in place. How much more do they need to well, add? Well, you talk about a maximum of about 35 kilograms, and uh -huh. that does the whole job. It does everything, and so that's our, what. The current solution weighs 42 pounds. Okay. And so 35 kilograms, it's another 40 pounds. Okay. So we're talking about a full electronic class three retrofit certified electronic flight bag, including. Um, a full Wi-Fi enabled in-flight entertainment system at 160 pounds. 160 pounds, wow. Um, and as you said, the, you need to be a, uh, a customer of the EFB to get the IFB. Well, you don't need to go through us. I mean, you can purchase it as a package, of course, but we are the hardware enabler for this, uh, yes. for this solution. Right. Um, so there will be two angles. I mean, it is. We will have there customers. There will be airlines? There will be airlines that will go for the in-flight entertainment solution that will get the EFE or the EFB as, a, as an add-on bonus. There will be customers that will go full for the EFB that will consider the in-flight entertainment solution as an add-on solution to their electronic flight bag. I mean, we'll, we'll approach this from two angles, which is absolutely unique because there's never been a company up until now that has been able to offer an electronic flight bag, a fully integrated platform solution and the in-flight entertainment solution. But just so I'm clear, if I'm an airline and I right. just want the wireless IFE, I'm still going to need to install the basic components of your electronic flight bag to do that because that's the core of the system. Exactly. So you might as well do real-time EFB in the cockpit exactly. if you're already going to have it. Exactly. Because you're, it's a rather inexpensive over Iridium, exactly. you might as well do it. Right. Oh, very clever, guys. Thank oh, you. I love it. I love There's it. There's actually one more, and you'll see that in the press announcement this afternoon. We're also releasing our own GSM SMS capability, which is also new. And, uh, You're getting into the in-flight mobile connectivity market over Iridium. Over Iridium. And, yes. and that and one I can be, confirm is Iridium. I, 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 how many, um, and, and I do believe I talked to your company about this uh, in the past, um, but at the time it couldn't be confirmed. How many, uh, how many people can make a voice call? At, at we are not uh, supporting data. voice calls, so we're just cutting out the voice completely. Yeah. We're only doing SMS yeah. and data, and that depends. Data depends a little bit on the broadband, because it doesn't make sense with the narrowband. The GSM yeah. I run on narrowband, it works the same way. Yeah. But on the broadband, that depends on another announcement to be made, but that hasn't been completed. Okay. Right now, okay. is, uh, we've in fact rolled out our flight back according to plan. We have um, applied for an upgrade STC where we are going to try out something very unusual which is in fact to have Bluetooth enabled on the cockpit in all phases of flight okay. which um, will that one I cannot tell you when it's going to be approved, but status right now in terms of testing and paperwork is we think we'll get it by October. Okay. And the reason for that is that on, on top of the class 3 EFB, what we're going to offer is the possibility for pilots to bring uh, portable equipment as backup or to basically hop onto the system. Uh, so that would be a, 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 um, a, a portable EFB lap, yes, but keyboard. But, but also backup. works in the cabin because we then have 
Bluetooth connectivity in the cabin. So let's say if you want to do your cabin logbook, you do want to do email out of the cabin, the Bluetooth you pick up everywhere, and you just hop onto the network. It's considered operational messaging. Okay. It's not accessible to the passenger. It's locked up. But in all phases of flights, you don't have to wait until you know you switch on Wi-Fi. It's on always. Okay. So. Tell me a little bit about where you guys stand in terms of the content. Okay, yeah, we're, uh, we're looking to have um, a very large library of content yeah. uh, on the plane. Uh, the main reason we can get around this is because we're incorporating uh, an auditable system. Yeah. Uh, that's DRM uh, uh, encrypted, so that's the digital rights management, which allow us to operate a pay-per-view model. Mm -hmm. Uh, which in turn makes us have a large library of content. Obviously, we don't pay for what's not being used. Okay. And where, where are you at in terms of your negotiations with the studios? Uh, I've had many uh, uh, many uh, trips to LA and stuff like that, so uh, we're quite far down the line. Uh, we're not quite at the stage of uh, uh, approval, uh, but uh, that should be happening uh, imminently. Okay. What's the time frame for uh, offering this solution on AirAsia X? Uh, we're looking to roll out in Q1 next year. Yeah, okay. And are you in negotiations with a number of airlines in that region or in the world? Where, where are you standing? Are you, are you uh, playing moment, with all these RFIs that are out there? Uh, at the moment, our uh, main focus is delivering a solution for AirAsia Rex. Okay. Uh, but obviously, we understand that this is a revolutionary product. Uh, and that it can easily be tailored for other uh, airlines, whether it's low cost, premium, uh, and we will be uh, after today going out uh, and setting this product jointly with Flight Focus. Will uh, passengers on AirAsia X be paying for the content? This is uh, uh, to generate ancillary income. So, so it is going to be a, a service that you have to pay for. Has a price point been decided? Uh, the price point hasn't been um, uh, finalized, but it's going to be very low. Yeah. And air, uh, passengers will um, log on with their own devices? Uh, basically, either the passengers can uh, bring on their own device, whether it's a laptop, smartphone, um, uh, a tablet, yeah. connect to our service, yeah, and they can start streaming films in HD, SD, uh, or access interactive games and so on, yeah, listen okay. to music. Or alternatively, if they haven't got a device, uh, we will provide some sort of tablet for them. Okay, okay. And that they can rent uh, and so on. Okay, interesting. Uh,